Is it true that Henry Ford lost a legal battle to another patent holder for the automobile? Was Ford responsible to make back payment royalties of over six years to George Selden and the electric vehicle company for patent violations had he lost? Hi, I'm Ken Smith, and this commentary is about the history behind the Selden patent and what might have happened had Henry Ford lost to Selden. Born in 1846, George Baldwin Selden was an American patent lawyer and inventor from New York. Claiming he invented a gas-powered vehicle, he filed for a patent on May 8, 1879. Now, Sell didn't, didn't call it an automobile since that name had not even been created yet. Instead, he described it as a road engine powered by a liquid hydrocarbon engine of the compression type. Well, that's some fancy legal wording for a gasoline engine. Ironically, it was the last part of that description that made the patent hold firm, since the only self-propelled vehicles before that time frame were steam-driven. In a historical choice of people that Selden used to witness and sign this patent, Selden selected a young local bank teller named George Eastman. However, this was not just happenstance. You see, Selden himself represented Eastman on earlier patent matters involving Eastman's designs and inventions. And in case you don't recognize who Eastman was, he is the man who formed Kodak and held the patent for roll films as well as certain cameras. Being a photographer myself, I found that quite fascinating. Now, before I delve much further into this, there are books and large studies and documentaries and even feature films on what I'm about to cover. So this is a 30,000 foot overview and a very brief explanation just to give you some slight insight on what happened back then. George Selden invented a powered vehicle that employed a modified engine that was already in existence during that time. The design of this engine took air that was compressed in an external compressor and injected that air into a constant pressure combustion chamber. So what does that mean? Well, in layman's terms, this was not the internal combustion engine in use by 1903. In fact, it was not even close. Selden applied for a patent in 1879 and through a series of delays was finally granted one in 1895. Under patent office practices of that time, this delay of 16 years was in fact lawful. To add to this, Selden had repeatedly proposed new language for his patent claims. And I believe that this was to encompass other engine designs and automobile designs that were being produced by other manufacturers. That's just my opinion or speculation. And I would love to read your comments on what you might think happened. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the speculation that Selden kept this patent pending until more internal combustion engines were on the road is something that some historians actually do claim. During this delay, a number of automobile companies were already using the engine design. Regardless if this is correct or not, the patent eventually wound up in the hands of the electric vehicle company of Hartford, Connecticut. In 1900, this electric car company had started producing gasoline-powered cars with Selden's engine patent. They agreed to pay Selden $10,000 for the rights of the patent and a royalty for every car based on his design. So to protect this patent, the Association of Licensed Automobile Manufacturers, or the acronym of ALAM, was formed. Several major manufacturers joined this group, including Cadillac, Winton, Packard, Locomobile, Knox, and Peerless. When Henry Ford set up the Ford Motor Company in 1903, he actually tried to join ALAM, but he was denied. It's theorized that he was not admitted because numerous former investors and other partners of Ford had already joined and were high in the ranks of ALAM, thus having the authority to essentially shut Ford out of the young industry. But he was undetermined by the ALM decision or the Selden patent, and Ford began manufacturing his automobile. However, 
Ford was slapped with a patent infringement lawsuit soon afterwards. Shortly after its creation in March of 1903, the Alem began advertising in the press to warn prospective buyers of automobiles that they faced an infringement suit under the Selden patent should they buy from an unlicensed manufacturer. The Alem also sent letters warning unlicensed new manufacturers that they infringed Selden's patent. And in October 1903, it brought suit against the Ford Motor Company. In retaliation, Ford took out this notice to dealers, importers, agents, and users of gasoline automobiles. In this article, it states that we will protect you against any prosecution for alleged infringements of patents. Regarding alleged infringements of the Selden patent, we beg to quote the well-known patent attorneys, Messrs. Parker and Burton. The article further goes on by saying, we are the pioneers of the gasoline automobile. Our Mr. Ford made the first gasoline automobile in Detroit and the third in the United States. His machine built in 1893, two years prior to the issue of the Selden patents in November 5th of 1895 is still in use. The article concludes with this bold statement. We have always been winners. In a much anticipated trial, the District Court of New York sustained and ruled in favor of Selden, stating that his patent had in fact been infringed. The court briefly commented on the workmanlike manner in which Selden prepared his claims. They went on by saying, Mr. Selden is a member of the bar, especially devoted to patent causes. He seems to have been his own solicitor during most of his contests with examiners over this application. And the clearly and simply worded claims in suit are good professional work. He has avoided the trap into which Morse fell. Selden does not pretend to have invented any new machine in the same sense that Whitney invented the cotton gin or Howe invented the sewing machine. He does not specify any one mechanical device for which in some branches of art a prototype cannot be found. They went on by saying after 30 years no gasoline motor car had been produced that does not have an organization of parts identical with or equivalent to that made by him. The court found that Selden had organized the parts into a whole. And the court held that in such an organization, there resided a high order of invention and that the patent was so fundamental and far-reaching as to cover every modern car driven by any form of petroleum vapor and is yet commercially successful. This decision instantly redounded to the benefit of the ALAM. Membership skyrocketed and it infuriated Ford. Ford immediately put up a bond and appealed the decision. The case came for hearing before the U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Judge Noyes wrote the opinion of the court and held that while the Selden patent covering an early type of automobile was valid, it did not cover the basic features of the Ford car and others joined with the Ford company as defendants in the action. This decision came like a clap of thunder and was entirely unexpected by the exhibitors at the big show. The whole atmosphere seemed to take on an electric quality after the announcement and it was not until the next morning that some of the members were acquainted with the facts. Henry Ford declined to comment on the court's decision other than to state that the facts were before the public. Selden was asked for a statement for the press and he said, I went into this enterprise hoping to make a little money out of it. I have succeeded much better than I expected, and as my patent has but a year or two to run, the decision has no severe significance. The case will probably go to the Supreme Court. But the case, however, never made it there, and shortly after the ALAM was dissolved. But prior to its demise, it raked in over $2 million in license fees collected from its membership, to which Selden received approximately one-tenth. 
The Selden case was closed, but the controversies that it aroused has endured to the present day. I had the pleasure to photograph one of these rare Seldens that's still in existence and was owned by one of the members of our Model A Club. I'll put a link in the description. I hope you found this video entertaining and informing, and like I said earlier, it's just a very high-level view of what really took place over years of time. Please remember to like and subscribe. It's so important to us. But most of all, be blessed.